Okay, we're going to talk about some uses of percents. And this is based on a true story. I got a card in the mail from a local store offering 25% off. And when I went by, there was a large sign on the store saying 30% off everything that day. And some of the items I liked were on 50% off racks. And I also had an additional card that gave me 10% off. So if you think about it, we have 30% off, 50% off, 10%, and 25% off, which adds up to more than 100% off, 115% off. So the question asked is, is everything going to be free? Are they going to pay me to take items out of the store? And then in addition, what would a $425 suit cost after all the discounts? And we might as well figure in tax, which was about 8.1% at that time. Well, let's have a look at what the percents are going to do. And let's say something has a price X, whatever, whatever I don't know. If I take 30% off of the price, I pay the remaining part of the percent, or 70%. And additionally, if I take 50% off, well, I, I pay the other half, 50%. If I take 10% off, I actually pay 90%. And if I take 25% off, I pay 75%. So we can calculate what the actual effect of these 4% reductions are. And of course, it's not going to leave me leave it free. So 0 0.7 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.9 times 0.75. And I get 23%, which is a pretty remarkable change. We're going to have our, our price, whatever it is, times 0.23625. So I'm going to pay just under a quarter of what items are marked at. Let's let's do this in again for a $425 suit. So and, and we could do the whole thing, or we could use our new shortcut number here. But even if we did the entire thing out, 0 0.7 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.9 times 0 0.75. Seven, five. And we reiterate, taking off 30% is 30% less than 100% or 0.7. Likewise, for the 8% tax, a normal a multiply that wouldn't change would be 100% or 1. This time I wanted to increase by 8%, so it would be 1.081. I see a lot of people put 1.81 here on problems in, in history of teaching this class. And that would be an 81% tax, which we have high taxes, but that would be remarkably high. So let's go back and I can do a second entry to pull up the last calculation and I can multiply it times the price of the suit. It won't matter that my 425 in the calculator is at another position, multiplication is commutative. And I can multiply times 1.081 and I get an answer of $108. With tax, $108.54 would be the price of my quality men's suits. Now you know why I'm such a well-dressed professor.